So we are live on YouTube and Mr. G, can we pause this? Should I should pause? Gary is sharing the screen for that menu or leave it? Um, you could still, you could keep the menu up and, um, but you can, um, you can take off the music. That's what I did. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I I'm turned sorry. the music off. I'm sorry, I'm hearing, I'm, it's on my end, that's why. That's why, I'm sorry about that. Sorry about that, look, I had a video open on my end, so it was playing, I'm like, oh. All right, how are you guys doing? Welcome to World Languages and Culture. Today we are in um, South Korea. And in celebration of um, Asian American Pacific Islander heritage, well, I know that was for me, but we're still gonna celebrate it in our last two weeks here for June, um, in celebration of Hispanic, of not Hispanic, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, um, we are exploring our wonderful Asian American, um, Asian countries and Pacific Islander countries as well. And so I'm actually gonna share my screen here and um, I'm actually gonna go over to our um, we actually have a really awesome Wooten page um, in celebration of Asian American. Uh, oh, that menu. Should I stop sharing that screen for now? Yes, you did. You did. And that's fine. Oh, okay. And you guys, let me introduce you to Mr. Ajit. Um, he is actually, he's been a wonderful volunteer that's been volunteering with us. Um, and so he is going to be assisting with, um, with us today in world language class. So let's say hello to Mr. Ajit. And he's an awesome volunteer from USC. So, woo -woo. and he actually graduated this year too. So congratulations, Mr. Ajit, that's a big deal. Thank you. Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, so can you guys all see my page where it says Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month? Yes, awesome. So I, I wanted us to explore our page here and you guys, um, we have a really awesome blog as well where you can get extra Wooten dollars. Sidebar, I hope that you, did you guys put in your order today for your Wooten dollars? For the one dollar store, my kid, my kid did. Mommy, yeah. me don't hold. Wonderful. Mommy, Make me don't. sure that you do. Don't forget, you have the whole day today, so till twelve midnight. Right tomorrow morning, we're gonna open it up and make sure your order is in because we're gonna place the order through Amazon for all your items. Okay, but you gotta make sure you place your order today. Okay, so make sure you do it, and you have the whole. You have till midnight, so even after class, you can take your time and choose what you want. So. Um, here we are going to check out some of our wonderful um, information here that, um, like it says there, our wonderful volunteer, Ms. Marlene, compiled this timeline depicting major his historic events that impacted the Asian American Pacific Islander community. So I want us to take a field trip over here to um, this wonderful page and explore some of the um, our history, some of um, the history that's here, and also um, some of these awesome people down here as well. And I'm actually gonna have you guys some, take some turns um, reading about some of the information, okay? All right, so let's, we're just gonna do a preview of up here because we're gonna dive more into this um, next, um, next week as well. So um, let's see, let's start with the Chinese In Exclusion Act. So it says, um, in this time, it was a law that restricted immigration in the United States was established to maintain white racial purity as it was believed that declining wages and economic ills were caused by Chinese workers. So there was um, some challenges that were facing with racism and that kind of stuff. And so um, they had this act that was there. But then afterwards, um, let's see. Uh, ooh, ooh. Let's see, let's let's look at some of the different. Oh, was it these three only? Oh no. All right. So look at this one. Delano gripe strike. So these are all just historic events, you guys. So agricultural workers organizing committee, predominantly Filipino, organized a labor strike against 
grape growers in Delano, California to fight against the exploitation of farm workers. National Farm Workers Association, predominantly Mexican, joined the cause in support, in support this leading to the two creating the United Farm Workers Organizing Committee. And so use of boycotts, marches, organizing, um, community organizing and nonviolent non resistance gained national attention. So they were fighting for equality, fighting for, um, you know, um, fair treatment when it came to work. Um, let's see here. Second. Yeah, Sorry. Uh, can I spotlight you now, Ms. Christelle? Um, no, actually, yeah, you can. You can actually spotlight me. Mm -hmm. So fine. to do the spotlight, I just go to more and then just spotlight for everyone under Wooten Center, right? Yes. And anything else or that's it? Mm -hmm. That's it for right now. Mm -hmm. So can I have a reader to read one of, um, one of the people here um, that was an influential person in Asian American Pacific Islander heritage? Choose one. Any volunteers? Any takers? Okay, how about I'll start and then somebody else can choose another one, okay? <laughs> All right, let's start with, uh, let me see what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna start with Philip Veracruz. So Philip Veracruz was a labor rights activist who worked closely with Larry uh, Itty Long to ensure fair working conditions and wages for fellow farm workers. He was a foundational figure in the Agricultural Workers Organization Organizing Committee, which later became part of the United Farm Workers Organization. All right, let's see, let's scroll. Okay, somebody else wanna take another one? Anybody, it could be parents, it could be youth, anybody. Kayla, go for it. Kayla, is that your hand? Go for it. Um, yeah, uh, hold on. Let me try and do something really quick. Okay, can you hear me good still? Yes, okay. Um, I'm gonna choose. Um, <clears throat> do you think you could uh, um, zoom in a little bit or something? Mm. Okay. Um. Um. Hold on. Okay. There. Okay. Um. Uh, how do you pronounce the the the, 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 the lady's young the, the the lady's name? Maureen. Maureen. Go. Okay, Maureen. Go. She she is an author of young adult fiction. She has written four novels. Mm -hmm. Novels. 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 Her best critical. Claimed is her so for me so sophomore 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 novel 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 or something so novel novel believe in a thing called love currently she is writing. For Marvel, for the comic series Silk, which focuses on Korean American super superheroine. Awesome! Thank you so much. So she is a author. She writes novels um, for young adults. All right, let's do let's do one more. Let's see, actually, so these are so these are not uh, journalists and novelists. Let's let's go to a different category. So how about this is entertainment? 
Can someone choose one from here? Okay, I guess I'll just do it. Go for it. I'm gonna do Sandra O. Oh. Awesome. Okay. Uh, she's an actress who is best known for her role in Grey's Anatomy as Christina Yang and her role in Killing Gabe as Eve po Polistria, I believe. She has received two Golden Globe Awards, being the first Asian woman to do so, four Screen Actor Guide Awards, and 12 Primetime Emmy Award nominations. She became the first Asian woman to host the Golden Globe Awards in 2019. Awesome. So, in like it says, Grey's Anatomy, some of these really awesome shows. Um, and so just really making an impact in, um, like she said, being the first Asian woman um, to receive two Golden Globe Awards. So that's a really big deal. Oh, come on now. Look, I'm going to talk about this one. Dwayne The Rock. Hey, hey, Do hey, you hey, know the what rock, the, rock the Rock is cooking? <laughs> yes. I was going to say, can I do The Rock? Yes, you can do The Rock. <clears throat> the Rock, he is an actor, producer, retired professional wrestler, American and Canada football player. He is one of the most highest growing and highest paid actors. He first he he his first acting role was the in the Mummy Returns and his first lead role was spin off the the Scorpion the Scorpion King. He found the Dwayne the Rock Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson Rock Foundation that works with a at risk of terminally ill children. And, 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 and also he's one of my favorite yes wrestlers. Yes, yes, he is. I think he's a lot of people's favorite wrestler, you know, because he has a uh, um, great uh, personality, just like you, D2, you know, he's like, do you smell? No, 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 let me say it right. Do you smell? What the rock? What does he say? Is cooking. You smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> I used to love that. My dad, he, we grew up watching wrestling from when we were, when I was younger. So really awesome, really cool. And so he is um, Pacific Islander, right? So, so yes, so really, really cool. All right, let's do one category here in music and we're going to get started with our cooking. Yes, that is her, Kayla. I see her. I see that. Do you want to share about her? Do you want to read about her info? Um, her born Gabriella Sadamanto mm -hmm. yeah. Rosa is a black Filipino American singer from Va Vallejo, California. Um, known for her amazing vocals and poignant R and B mm -hmm. songs slash lyrics, her albums was. Um, hold on. Oh, there it is. Was nominated for five Grammy Awards in 2017. Yes. So she is, I mean, I, I, like I saw her in a commercial the other day. I think it was like a Pepsi commercial or something. So she is Black and Filipino um, American, and she's a singer here. Um, and she's actually from California, so she's really cool. And so we have so many people, so many people who are... Um, who are Asian American Pacific Islanders who are making an impact here in our world. And, um, and there's so much, so much that we can learn from each other. Even Kamala Harris, you guys, did you guys know she's Asian American Pacific Islander? Of course, yeah, she's half Indian, half uh, Jamaican. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and she's our vice president. Even Jason, Jason, um, 
uh, Manoa. And so he's um, native Hawaiian um, as well. So all, so Hawaii is a Pacific, um, Pacific Island, right? And so, um, so really, really awesome, you guys. So let's learn more about each other. And so we're going to explore more of these um, awesome people. And um, there is a really cool blog down here that when you click here to access the blog, you will be able to earn extra Wooten dollars as well. And this will go towards dollars for the summer, but you can actually um, participate in these different conversations. You can post pictures, you can um, do all kinds of really cool things here in our Padlet. So join our blog and participate. Alrighty, are you ready for us to get cooking? Have you guys ever made dumplings before? No? Well, you know what? Um, we're gonna have some fun with it today. And the way that we're gonna make it, um, we'll be making it steamed and fried, all right? So let us get our, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's get our ingredients ready. Do you guys have all ingredients ready? Oh, you know, Miss Christian. Um, I'm gonna. Miss Crystal. Yes. They gave us the wrong wrappers. I had to order groceries because I worked today, <laughs> and I just picked them up, and they gave us egg roll spring roll <laughs> instead of the. Egg roll spring roll. Uh, it will be. Okay, the egg roll spring roll may be thinner, but you guys are cooking with um mushrooms. Oh, and tofu, yeah. Oh, so that means for yours, um, because the difference with like, um, like I was researching the difference between the the dumpling dough and like a wonton dough, it may be a little thicker. So with the egg roll dough, it may be thinner. And so as you wrap it the same, so we can still wrap it the same way. Um, look, you can probably even have some fun with it and roll it like the actual egg roll way, right? So you you have an opportunity to make some egg rolls. See, look, when things don't work out the way we do, in real life, you improvise, right? So don't be like, oh no, I can't make my dumplings. No, you're going to have you some dumplings slash egg rolls, right? So um, so we're going to make it work. And then because you guys' filling is um, going to be mostly vegetables and the tofu, it's not going to take long to cook. Um, I'm going to be putting turkey. Are you guys, detour, are you guys using the turkey? Yeah. Okay. So because we're going to do the turkey, that one is going to, it's supposed to cook for 15 to 20 minutes. So for ours, it will cook a little longer, but for yours, it won't take as long. So you'll be just fine. Can I spotlight you now, Miss Christelle? Yes, go for it. You don't have to ask Mr. Um, Ajit. Go for it. We no. have tofu and turkey. Yes. So I'm glad that you did. And um, Ajit, you can spotlight this um, view down here with the... Um, on the, um, the chopping board. And you guys, Mr. G, this is his first time with us. He is working with us and, and all that good stuff. All right, so, um, voila. Okay, so we're gonna start with, pull up our lovely, our lovely menu here. So let's go ahead and put two cups of water to boil because we're going to cut our cabbage. Okay, we're gonna cut our cabbage. Um, we're gonna actually cut it. We're actually gonna blanch it first before we cut it. We're gonna blanch it first. Um, and then we're going to um, chop up our garlic, onions, ginger. So let's do that first. So garlic, onions, ginger, and then we want to put water on to boil for the um, for the cabbage. See, I've got some onions here that have been. Yeah. 
Okay, so let me go put, so go ahead and put your water on to boil. And then for those of you who are working as a team, um, you can already start chopping up your onions and your onions, when we chop them, you're gonna just chop them in like, you know, squares. So like here, I was already using this onion. So it's almost like a half an onion. So we're just chopping it in small squares, just like straight across, right? So, you know, they should be about like a good chop because remember, our, this is gonna make up our filling for, for the dumplings. So we wanna make it, we don't want our pieces to be super big. We want them to be like small squares. Okay, so go ahead, chop onions. Let me grab my garlic and put the water on to boil. Because we're gonna, we're gonna, when we go back to the stove afterwards, when we are steaming the dumplings, we'll, um, we'll do more, um, We'll boil, we'll put water to boil there again. So, um, so just kind of put water in your pots so they'll be ready. Okay. Top our garlic, um, this onion. So with this onion, garlic, and ginger, we are going to, um, after we chop it, we'll saute it. That's gonna make our filling taste really good. Miss Giselle, uh, yes. about the cabbage, how, how much for the cabbage, the whole cabbage? Um, so for the cabbage, you can use like one quarter of a cabbage. Yeah, so one fourth of your cabbage. So you can cut it in half. And then because you guys are doing it for your, for your family, um, because this is going to be a part of the filling, um, depending on how many... Um, depending on how many of your rounds, like in these, this has, um, this actually has 60. Uh, no, that's servings. So it has, um, I was looking for where it tells how many sheets of it it has in here, but it has a good bit, right? So these will be all the dumplings that we're gonna make. So. Miss Brenda, for your family, I would probably say maybe you could do like one, one whole, like a half of a cabbage. So the bigger family, just do a little bit more cabbage to make your filling go a little further if you're going to make more um, of your dumplings. So if you want to make a lot of dumpling filling, you can use half of the cabbage, or if you're gonna make like enough for like um, three, to, three to four people, then use half, then use a quarter of your cabbage. Something that I learned about um, with these dumplings is that um, in Korean culture, families will get together and when they make the dumplings, everybody helps to make them, even the men. Everybody helps to make the dumplings. And it's a time for them to talk, for them to catch up. And so everybody helps to make 
dozens and dozens of these dumplings. And then when it's time to eat it, right? Could you imagine everybody sitting down to eat it and being like, oh, this is so good. And you know that everybody that helped to make it is helping to eat it. All right. So, our onions here. And you can put your, your fire on the stove. You can put it on high so that water can boil. Get it boiling really quick. All right, so I'm gonna do the ginger next. And you can use your spoon and pull off that, um, pull off the skin there. So do you, what do you guys, do you guys notice that some of the different Asian places that we've been to or? Oh, huh? So Agua is boiling. Oh, your pot is boiling already? Okay, great. So then you can chop your, um, you can put your cabbage. So for your cabbage, for your cabbage, you're gonna put it in um, almost kind of whole. How do we chop the cabbage? What'd you say? Yeah, how do we chop the cabbage? Okay, let me show you. Give me a second here. I have a half, have a half piece here. So for your cabbage, you can just chop it. So. I have a half piece here. So for right now, just chop it. And you're gonna just drop it. When you put it in the hot water, you're just putting it in for 30 seconds. So it's not a long time at all. We're just blanching it, okay? And we're gonna put it in the hot water and also have a bowl of cold water. So you're gonna go from hot for 30 seconds over to the cold, and then you're gonna bring it back to the board. So let it cool down and bring it back to the board and then we're gonna chop it to go in our filling, okay? So if your water's boiling, go and do it. And for those working still on your ginger, my, my water's still getting ready to boil, so. In the meantime, get your ginger and your garlic ready. Chop those up. And then remember, um, we're gonna saute these garlic, ginger, and onion with some olive oil. And so it's gonna release all those good flavors for the filling. I'm gonna do the garlic. So for our garlic, we're gonna do four garlic cloves. Oh, and can I just say that you guys were awesome at the showcase? Your videos were so great. And those of you who sung or who had different presentation in other classes, you guys were awesome. So, woohoo.
So garlic, we're gonna slap it down there. Just gonna let us get into it. Oh, dumplings are so good, Christelle. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I, I've had Chinese dumplings. This is some uh, Koreans are Korean one, and then uh, Korean dumplings are a little bit different. What is it called again? I know in uh, Japanese dumplings they're called ginza or ginzu or something. Mm -hmm. So this one is um, mansu. This one is mansu. I mean, I'm sorry, not mansu, mandu. Mandu. Oh yeah, I just missed a yes. word. Mm -hmm. So mandu. And I'm thinking you're probably referring to this word right here. Um, gyoza. Gyoza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then pot stickers too. So pot stickers. Um, I love pot stickers. The ones from Costco are really good. And then <laughs> in India, they have something similar. They call it, uh, they put chicken inside called chicken momos. Ooh. So Mr. Ajit, so you guys, Mr. Ajit, he's from India. Am I right, Mr. Ajit? That's yeah, right? I was born here, but my family's from India. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you Am guys, I good with the spotlighting? Uh, yes, you are. Oh, great. Yes, you are. All right. So, yes. So Mr. G is from India, which is really, well, his family, like you said, his family's from India and that's his, um, you know, his cultural, his, his cultural background. And so really, really cool. So you guys, we have all kinds of people like Miss um, Yesenia. She's, um, she's from here, uh, but she was actually studying in Korea um, prior to the pandemic. So um, when I asked her about South Korea, um, she was able to give me some really good information too. So, all right, let's see about my water and we should have all of our chopped. Um, if you're using the tofu, well, the tofu we're going to use next in a little bit, um, but if you're using mushrooms, um, uh, this is a good point, like how we're going to saute the veggies. Um, this is a good place for you to put in your, um, your mushrooms. So give them some, some flavor with the onions and the garlic and everything um, to really make your filling really great. So my butter's boiling with the cabbage. So let's go ahead, let's take our cabbage out, put it in the cold water and bring it back to the chopping board so we combine it along with our, um, with our turkey. Yeah, we're gonna, oh, before we combine it, we're gonna saute our beans. All right, so your cabbage should look like this. I have a question. Sure. Do you also cut in your garlic into the onions? Yes, so we have garlic, onions, and ginger in here. So this is what we're gonna saute. And I blanched the cabbage, so just be careful it's hot. But if you notice how the color kind of started to, um, it kind of starts to get a little tender, but it's still crunchy, right? So this is what you call blanching. When you put in the hot water and then you, put in some cold water, which stops it from cooking. So we're gonna let this cool down. And in the meantime, let's get our 
pan, our frying pan ready. So let's saute these. And we're gonna bring everything back and chop it up with the cabbage. And um, we're gonna put in our, if you're using tofu, if you're using um, um, the turkey, we're gonna combine everything and then we're gonna start wrapping it in. So let's go over and start sauteing our vegetables, I mean, our onion, garlic. Are we sauteing the, the tofu as well? No, you're not sauteing the tofu. The tofu is really gonna add, when we start combining it in here with the cabbage, it's mm -hmm. gonna just help to add some texture um, okay. to it. Yeah. Got it. The tofu is almost gonna kind of act like a binder. Yeah. Okay, so let's sauté it So while your things are sauteing, if you are using the tofu, um, cut half of your tofu and put it in a paper towel. Um, or if you have a cheesecloth, on the thing I think I put um, in the video I showed you guys, the lady, she actually just used paper towel. So we know you guys all have paper towel. Um, put it in a paper towel and you wanna squeeze out the liquid. Right, so squeeze out the liquid and then you're gonna add your tofu in with this mixture here with the cabbage. Um, Ms. Thomas, D2, you guys are using um, tofu as well? Yes. Awesome. Mm. And you guys taste your um taste your cabbage like how we blanched it. Um, do you taste how watery and like juicy it is? So cabbage have a lot of liquid in it. That's gonna really add good juices to your filling. I was going to say, why are all of our screens are pinned? Oh, because Mr. G's spotlighting you guys. Do you want to see, do you want to see my board closer? Yes. Okay, so Mr. G, can you zoom in on my chopping board screen here and spotlight my spotlight only my chopping board? So they, they'll see it bigger on their screen. Thank you. I need to see how to cut. Sure. All right. So for cutting the, so Mr. Is G, that better now? 
And I'll just give her a gun pin. Is that better now? So take off D2's and Kayla's spotlight. And just leave this one down here with me chopped. Okay. Uh, remove spot. So D2 with the chopping. So like how I have the quarter of the cabbage, I'm just going to cut it. Is that better now, guys? Yes. So cut it like this. So just kind of cut it long ways. And be careful with your knife. And cut it again like that. It's almost like little long strips. And then we're just gonna go straight across. And to cut in little squares. Make sure to keep your fingers behind, okay? Oh, I didn't mean to uh, uh, spotlight Kayla's and Darian's. Oh, no, you're OK. That's It's actually D2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to see it. Oh, oh, yes, it is uh, Dairon. Yes. Dairon, yeah. He just wanted to see how you cooked in a bigger screen. Yes. Thank you, Mr. G. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, so we have all this great cabbage filling, you guys. And, you know, if you want to run your knife through it one more time. So they should be small squares. And remember, cabbage is going to wilt down, right? So you see how it's a lot right now? When we cook it in the filling, it's going to be small and tiny. Uh, may I spotlight Kayla's right now or wait a little bit? All right, so you guys, let's start combining all of these awesome parts. Is it okay so, if I spotlight Kayla's or just wait a second? <laughs> so Mr. G, Phil, go, you can go for it. You don't have to ask me. If you see Kayla doing something interesting over there, you can spotlight her. Same thing with D2. And then when we're chopping on the board, you can bring it back to the board. All right, so you guys, we're gonna put the cabbage in here. You should have your um, onions, garlic, and your ginger sauteed. So we're gonna add it in. Add in your garlic. Don't mind mine. Mine got a little extra crispy, you guys. I was like, oh, Lord. All right. Okay. Then add in your, um, add in your meat, add in your turkey. And if you have the tofu, make sure you squeeze out the water. You put in your paper towel. And just squeeze out the water so you have almost like a dry toast. Were well, we supposed to cook the turkey first? No. No, we're not cooking. I know. I saw that too. I was like, but that's how they do it. So they actually don't cook the turkey first. Um, it's actually going to steam in the dumplings. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, the ground turkey is actually going to use um, ground pork or beef. 
Um, but really, you can use whatever meat of your choice. And um, and because we're steaming, it's going to cook down. You know, Miss Thomas, I said the same thing. I said, I said, really? They didn't cook the meat before? Like, they didn't cook all the filling before and then add it? But no, they actually do it. Um, Do we saute the mushrooms or no, those go in the same way? What'd you say? Do we saute the mushrooms too or not yet? Yes, uh -huh. saute the mushrooms with the, with the garlic, the onions, and the ginger. Mm hmm. We're going to get our hands in here. So your turkey, put it in there. Your tofu, put it in there. Your mushrooms, get it in there. We're also going to add in our spices and um, like our black pepper and all that good stuff. We're going to add it in. If you're using the turkey, like how I'm using it with my hand here, um, uh, Mr. G, can you spotlight just my page only there, please? Um, um, then, um, want to make sure we wash our hands really well. Okay. So anytime we're working with, uh, raw meat, we want to make sure we wash our hands really well and we don't want any cross contamination. Okay. So if you touch this meat, that means you cannot touch anything else. Can't scratch. You can't pick up a, you can't pick up a, a uh, uh, phone, you can't, none of that. You have to watch what you touch after you grab this, um, anything that's around me. All right. So I'm actually gonna work it in like that. Notice I'm using one hand, okay? So I'm gonna work that in. And then let's go ahead, I'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna add the other things. And I'm gonna let my spoon help me out here a little bit. But if you wanna get your hands in there, you can get your hands in there, get your hands, get in there, get your hands in there, okay? Okay. Um, yes, Miss Brenda. Yes, I have a question about that. Sure. All that is the meat, is the cabbage, mm -hmm. and um, the tofu. Yes. Plus uh, the onion. Mm -hmm. with the, um, onion, with the, the garlic, and the ginger. In, 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 that, in that thing? The garlic and the ginger. Yes, all is all in that bowl? All in the bowl. Okay, okay, got it. Make sure for the tofu that you squeezed out the liquid. So squeeze out the, the put it in a paper towel and just squeeze yeah, out I, the liquid I did from that, it. Yeah. Awesome, and then just drop it. All right. Do you put the tofu in like cubes or just 
Thank you. Now the tofu, when you squeeze it, so when you squeeze it, it's gonna be like crumbly. Yeah, so it's gonna fit, it's gonna kind of almost feel like the like the ground, like how the ground turkey is in here. Um, it's gonna kind of do like the ground turkey. Okay, let me wash my hands. All right, so now we're gonna put our spices. We're gonna, have, well, not spices, but just our other seasonings. So we have soy sauce, we have an egg. If you're a vegetarian, you don't have to add the egg. Um, we're gonna put a little sugar, some black pepper, sesame oil. Okay, so let's do it one step at a time. Soy sauce, an egg, sugar, black pepper. Soy sauce. All right, so we're going to put, I'm going to just put the, I have an egg here. I'm going to drop it in. Yeah. And we're going to have... We're gonna have a teaspoon, a tablespoon of sesame oil. Okay, wait, let me, before I get to sesame oil, let's do a tablespoon of black pepper. So depending on how spicy you want this, you can add more or less. I'm just filling up my spoon there with the black pepper. So about a tablespoon of that. And we have a teaspoon, a teaspoon of sugar. This is, you know, it's just gonna give it a little um a little sweetness there. And our soy sauce is gonna be a lot. So for the soy sauce, let's put a let's put a uh, a tablespoon. Okay, actually, let's put two tablespoons because remember we didn't put any salt in here, right? So it's gonna give our the soy sauce has salt in it, so it's going to give it some really good flavors. Let's just mix that up. All right, 
the middle. Oh, and add the sesame oil. You know what? The sesame oil is. Oh yeah, yeah. You can put some sesame oil in this one because we're also gonna put it in the um, in the um, in the sauce that we'll make. And it's just one tablespoon. One tablespoon. Okay. So now our filling is ready. So now we're gonna start making our rounds. So you wanna get some, um, if you have a sheet um, with plastic wrap, or even if you have like um, um, wax paper, or just your plate, I mean, whatever you wanna use, it could be a plate, uh, but just something to lay out your, your dumplings as you make them, so that they don't stick to each other. Always remember to cut away from you. So, so actually this, this is really thin. It's like, you can kind of like see through it, right? So go ahead and you can grab your tables, you can grab your tablespoon or if you have a teaspoon, depending on the size of your, um, your square here, will determine um, how much filling you put in it. And then take some water and you're gonna go in a half moon. So go in a half moon around and then you're gonna fold it over in the middle and you're gonna press it right there and, and make sure you get it in for the edges all the way around. So. Oh, Chris Till? Yes. Did you like, for the dough, did you like make it, make the dough or did you buy the dough like, cause? Yes, I bought the dough from the store. Oh, I thought you like uh, handmade it from scratch like, Oh no. Now the thing is in um, Asian culture, they do make it from scratch and you can make it from scratch, but you know, this, us doing it this way is going to help us save some time. All right. So you should have a dumpling like this. And when you put it, when we put it to steam, it's going to kind of get a little wavy. Um, and so like for me right now, I'm looking at mine. Like I put, I feel like I put too much filling in here because it's kind of squeezing out right there. So put a little less filling so you can really crimp all the sides and so your filling is not staying in so the juices are not oozing out, okay? So let's get wrapping. And I'm actually showing you guys two different ways we can wrap it. Mr. Stout. Um, how much soy sauce do we put? I'll put in two tablespoons of the soy sauce into your mixture. All right, so let me grab a plate. So the cool thing about us making these dumplings is that um, as you make so many, you can actually, we'll start um, uh, putting our water to boil again, and we can do them in batches. Let me get a... A little bit there. I'm going to use my this time. Ha. 
half moon with the water on the edge. And then press it from the middle. And then press, press, press around the side. Okay. So it should be still nice and tight. Yeah. That, that one, I'm, I'm very proud of this. This one came out way better, way better. Okay, and there's no like sauce trying to trying to get out. Okay, so I'm using a, a teaspoon. I noticed that when I use my teaspoon, it's a better for these circles that I have here. It's a better, um, better, a better amount. So could you imagine? So this, I think this pack here probably has like 60, <laughs> 60 of these little um, bandu circles, right? Could you imagine the, the video I watched when the lady, she said her mom would have like five of these packs. Could you imagine doing this all day, making these dumplings? I cannot imagine doing that all day. <laughs> And like she and like she said, you know, it's something that the family does all together. So the men do it, the kids are doing it, everybody's doing it, having fun together, and you're talking, you're chatting, you're laughing. Um, but yes, and then everybody. I can, I can understand with a lot of people. Yes, right. So it's almost like a family. So when they have a family gathering, everybody comes together and they make the everybody. And then remember, this is like this is an art. This is not like, you know, there's the um, you know, you can go to school to learn how to do this like very professionally, you know? So um, the mothers and the aunties and grandmas, they teach, you know, they take a lot of pride in, you know, you being able to make your good dumpling, you know? All right. Okay. We, we on a good little roll right here. Good little. So this is a good point for us to put on. Let's put our water to start boiling. And like for me, I actually have two steamer pots. Um, so if you have a steaming pot or if you have that steaming um, pan that you could put down into your pot, put the coffee filter. Well, we'll put the coffee filters in a little bit, but let's get our water boiling. So by the time we dish out some more of these, we could put the first batch in to start steaming. Or if you have two pots, then you can put both of them to go um, as well. So let me go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna roll out some more, and I'm gonna show you how to make an, an another pattern in this um, in the dumplings. Um, it's pushed out. Yeah. Um, things are are um, I think the egg rolls um have do we have to boil or um fry them? Oh, we're gonna boil them, and then after they're boiled, we're gonna um, we're gonna fry them to give them the crispy edge. So for yours, yours will need to boil for as long. Um, um, or not, we're not boiling them; we're steaming them. So we're steaming them. So they're not gonna when you boil something, it's submerged in the water. But when you're steaming it, the water's below, and then the steam from it is gonna cook it from above. So um, yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Wait, how do you do the doublings one more time? What did you ask? Cindy, what did you ask? Uh, how do you do the dumplings one more time? Oh, how do I, oh, how do I do the dumplings again? All right, so here, and then go around the edge. So you're gonna go half, like a half moon, going around, and then bring the middle up to the top, and then press, 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 and press going around. Like a, like a moon, okay? And um, something that I read about, like, if, like with all the filling that we have here, 
um, they said you can actually put these together and freeze them. And when you're ready to use, when you're ready to use them, then you could just drop them in your soup. You could drop it in your, um, you know, if you want to steam them really quick or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get fancy with this one. So you can fold it like crimp it, crimp it, crimp it. So you can get fancy with your, so crimp it first and then you can fold it, fold it, fold it. So it's almost like you have like a little, like a little, like a little purse. You see that? Now that's just my design. That is not professional by any means. Okay. But they have ones that look like that as well. Okay. So you could kind of play with it, you guys. I'm going to show you another. I'm going to do it one more time in this style and then I'm going to show you another style that I saw. Around. And then you can kind of from the middle here, you can fold it up, up, up a little. little purse. And so I got two like those. Show you another one that I saw. This one. I can see this being like therapeutic. Like, you know, you're just sitting there and you're just focusing on making these and you kind of like drift away into dumpling land <laughs> where you're not thinking about anything. All right, so from here, I saw them go, let me see. It's almost like a cross. <gasps> oh, there it is, yay. So just like that. Have you guys ever seen like tortellini? and almost looks like a hat. So they have dumplings that look like this as well. So all we're doing is just crossing over, we're bringing it around and just crossing over the, it's almost like you're, go, like you're putting hand on, like, you know, you're crossing the legs of the dumpling. And then maybe put a little bit of water right there to make them stay. Like that. So we have three different ways that we can Put our dumpling like this. And when, when these go in, they're gonna come out wavy at the top. And then these are gonna be all nice and juicy. And because we have all that cabbage in it um, and that meat in there too, it's gonna have really good flavor. And your water should be boiling, you guys. So I'm gonna make a bunch of these. And put them in our steamer. Oh, and guess what? So I remember seeing a, a video and they actually have these where it's like a bigger dumpling. And when you bite into it, it's almost like you have to let the, the juices out. So I don't know, have you guys ever seen those Asian spoons? Um, so you put the dumpling in the spoon and then you kind of poke a little hole in it and you let the juice come out. And then you slurp the, the soup, you go, and then you eat the, and then you eat the dumpling. 
Have you guys ever seen ever seen videos like that? No? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have to pull one up for you guys. You'll be like, you probably maybe you've seen it in like a like a movie or some video or something like that. Or you know, you maybe seen it for the first time. But if you go to like a, a restaurant that um sells dumplings, they have different ones. And then of course they have all different kinds of fillings. Um, I'm sure you could do it sweet as well, like like as a dessert. Um, but they have the savory ones. And then, um, you know, when they come around, they're in these really pretty baskets. And then you choose what kind of dumplings you want. You just have a dumpling, like a dumpling party. And you know, once you get a good rhythm, now you start picking up the pace. I can feel my little rhythm getting catching up. I'm like, okay, I'm getting the hang of this now. How you guys feel? You guys getting the hang of it? All right, your water should be boiling, you guys, too. So maybe we can start, if you have a good amount, you can probably start putting some to start um, cooking, to start steaming while you make more. So you guys have a good amount? Yeah? Let me know. Maybe that's no, because nobody didn't say anything yet. Let's make some more. Are you guys ready for us to put some in the steamer? Yeah? B2, Kennedy, how are you guys coming? Miss Brenda, Andrew, how are you guys coming over there? Are you guys ready to put some in the steamer? Really bad when it comes to keeping up. <laughs> <laughs> but he's slowly getting the hang of it. Okay, that's well. You see, that's so. I'm telling you guys, this is a this is 
absolutely an art. Like it's almost like sushi. You know, you can't, you know, some people be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just gonna whip up some sushi. But if you are to go to like a professional, um, like if you were to talk to somebody that makes sushi all the time, it's really an art. You know, like if you were to really do it like the actual like full on way, people, they go to school for this, you know, just like they go to school to learn how to how to make sushi and how to slice that fish just right. You know, so it's super, super thin, you know. Um, so even with these dumplings, you guys, so you are we are learning. We're like the we're the 101. <laughs> we're the class 101. So. Yes, you will get the hang of it. And, and of course it takes practice as with anything, right? If you're doing sports, cooking a new dish. So just keep going. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Miss Christelle, have we ever did homemade egg rolls in, our, in the class? We have never made egg rolls. Uh, and I like egg rolls. Oh, Miss Brenda, I see you there. Um, no, we've never made egg rolls. Yes, those look good, Miss Brenda. <laughs> okay, so you guys, so um, for the summer, what do you guys think about us making egg rolls for the summer? Calm down. What do you think? Nice. Nice. Come through. That's what I'm talking about. Miss Christelle, when we start to stick, put them in the steamer, do we have to put anything on the steam part? Yes. It's like that little thing. Do we put oil or something? No, you don't put oil. Actually, let me show you. Um, in the video, I saw the lady, she had these coffee filters. So just line it in the bottom of your steamer. So like, this is the bottom of my steamer pot. And so just line it in the bottom. And put your dumplings. If you have any kind of filter, it's fine. And I'm just going to put them like this. And you kind of want to spread them out a little bit so they're not touching. Um, Miss Christelle, what do we use if we don't have filters? Um, if you don't have filters, you can use, um, I was even thinking like maybe wax paper um, um, or, <laughs> yeah, maybe wax paper could be an alternative. So it still gets the steam and then stick to your to your pot to your pot. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Put these guys in there. Stand them up a little bit. All right, so I'm putting these to steam. And I actually have, um, actually looked and I was like, oh, I have another steamer pot. I was like, cool. So um, you can steam them in batches. Um, and um, yeah, so let's get them, let's get some of these bad boys steaming. And then keep on making, keep on making your dumplings. I have this other one here too, so. Did you guys, um, do you guys have steamer pots like that? Or even like the little steamer, um, forgot what it's called, I put on the thing. It's like a little steamer pan that you can put in any kind of pot and it will just hold everything up so it doesn't touch that water. Were you guys able to get that? 
Yes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And you guys, just like how we're steaming these dumplings, steam your vegetables. Um, you can steam your vegetables. You can um, steam all kinds of good stuff. Uh, my family, we had steamed plantains the other day. So you can steam all kinds of things and just gives your food a different texture and taste. Um, compared to boiling it, because um, remember all the all those nutrients are gonna um, go into the water. So you so you want to kind of um, you know kind of balance out with that, but um, steaming it is another good way, and then it still gives you that little crunch with your vegetables that makes it fun to eat. And we wanna, um, I always wanna encourage you guys to eat more vegetables as you get, I mean, it's one thing when you're younger, but especially as you're getting older, when you guys are young, you're probably like, you don't have to worry about that. Yes, you do. Um, it's important what you eat and start eating healthy now um, as a young person, because when you get older, it's harder. I've had lots of friends and family that say, Make sure you watch your salt, watch your sugar, because high blood pressure and diabetes is real. And it affects your, it, you know, it affects a lot of your health. It can affect your eyesight. It can affect, affect your limbs. Could you imagine if you have diabetes? Because diabetes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I believe in nutrition. Like, so, I'll go say so another I thing, like, for nutrition, like, so make sure, like, at a young age, start eating, like, healthy. So that way it becomes habitual. Absolutely. So it's good habits, good habits. Which I did. And then also meeting like healthy stuff, like, uh, like try not to eat too much, too much, too much fast food that often like cook more at home, like vegetables. Yeah. And then like some chicken is okay. Fish, um, mm -hmm. try best to stay away from like red meat if you can, uh, if you could help it. But, um, and then, uh, have tofu, like, uh, it's okay to have some fish. It's good protein. So I mm -hmm. think that's okay. A balance of everything, right? So, you know, absolutely. Like, yeah, like, like, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. I have ribs for Memorial Day. We did barbecue ribs and they were great. And then start now, guys, like, uh, <laughs> plan to do vigorous exercise, like, between uh, 30 minutes to 60 minutes, even at a young age, like, no matter how old you are, like, seven, eight, start now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All that's going to help you stay healthy and give you a long life, you know? And um, when you're eating healthy and, um, you know, trying to keep your stress, keep stress low. Because um, remember, stress leads to lots of other things. So you want to keep healthy, um, reduce stress, have fun, laugh, smile, cook together like we do in this class. So... And then just every now and again, um, you know, don't, don't be like, oh yeah, I'm going to have some Takis every day. It's called heartburn. <laughs> Takis, I, won't what, I won't say what the other kind of burn would be. Takis mess up your stomach line. It sure does. It sure does. So you want to make sure. Be, and then remember all that red dye is not good for you. So uh, look at what you're eating and everything in moderation, you know, everything in moderation. So Crystal, absolutely right. Don't feel like, oh, I can't have any ice cream. I can't have any starch. No, uh, honestly have little ice cream, but in small quantities, honestly, a couple times a week or maybe once a week. Yeah. Don't eat the whole tub. <laughs> just grab a spoon you should be good <laughs> all right mm, i'm smelling my i'm smelling something good you know when you start when your nose starts smelling some stuff that means some good stuff is working out so those steamed noodles are steamed dumplings are doing their thing i'm gonna load this one up
Now, do we cover the pot stickers when we steam them? Yes, we do. Oh. Hmm? So cover it down, and then they're gonna steam for about 15 to 20 minutes. And um, after they steam, um, so you'll know that they're ready because like the little flower that's on your, the dusted flower that's on your um, stickers, your, um, your mandu here won't be anymore. And the dough won't look doughy. It will look, um, it'll look cooked, meaning it'll kind of have like a shiny look to it. So those are some ways that we know that our meat, our dumplings are cooked. And remember, because these ones have turkey in them, you want to let it, you know, cook for that 15, 20 minutes. Um, for those that just have the tofu and vegetables, you don't have to leave it for as long. Um, okay, so let's get this there. And um, we're going to make more mandu. And we're also going to start putting together our dipping sauce. So does anybody have any oaths or any stories to share? <laughs> any stories to share? About how it was growing up or any life lessons, any tips, tips for our young people or or youth, if you guys have any like things that you want to share with um, with us. Um, yesterday was my birthday. Oh, oh my goodness, Kayla. Okay, so we're gonna wish you happy. We're gonna sing happy birthday. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kayla. Happy birthday to you. Woohoo! Everybody unmute yourself. Say woohoo! Happy birthday, Kayla. Okay. Awesome. Kayla, what'd you do? What'd you do for your birthday? Um, on Monday, we did a barbecue, and then yesterday, uh, um, I went to Shakey's with my friend and my, my mom and my, my sister. Shakey's mm. is a good place, too. You had some mojos? Yeah, and pizza and chicken. I have fun with these ones the most. Like a little hat. Yay, Kayla, that's awesome. Miss Christelle, are you doing double like me? Let me see. You say you're doing double. You mean like more? Here's like, oh, look at you. That's a great idea. You could try it like that too, you guys. 
Oh, that's not a bad idea, Miss. Um, it's almost like a ravioli. Ooh, let's have some fun with it. Okay, so you guys, this is a traditional way of mandu, right? Well, like Miss Brenda, she's like, ooh, what if we did it like this in the middle? So you guys, this is us having fun with it, okay? And then instead of going to semi-stir, I'm gonna go all the way around. <clears throat> the uh, mandu ravioli. And then put it over the top. And then you can kiss it all the way around. Ooh. It's a good idea, Miss Brenda. Just make sure, make sure to put enough water. It's really tight. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Ah, I like it. Yeah. So have fun with it, you guys. So this is gonna make it a nice big dumpling. Ooh. Ooh, so Kayla, like you got how you guys have those wants, how you guys have the big, like um, if you wanted yours to be a really nice big um uh dumpling there, you can have fun with that. Oh yeah. Ooh, you can make it like a flower. Make little wavy edges. Ooh, have you guys seen like, um, like when they make food and then it's like art? Like they cut the, you know, if it's like a tomato, but they cut it in a certain way where it looks like a rose or they cut some cantaloupe and it looks like a boat or something, you know? I know they do that a lot in Asian culture because they believe, and I think a lot of places believe this too, but especially in Asian culture, I've seen it where, you know, it's like you eat with your eyes first, right? So when your food looks really beautiful and pretty and, you know, you're like, ooh, it's almost like you're telling a story, right? So um, a lot of pride is taken in Asian cuisine um, because they really look at the ingredients. Um, and then, you know, it, it's connected to a bigger purpose, you know, like a bigger meaning, you know? So when you're, even when you're making this with your family, it's to like gather everybody together and you guys can catch up, but then you guys also get to eat together. And one thing I noticed too, in um, Asian cultures, and I think in a lot of other cultures too, um, I see in Asian cultures um, where they eat together every day. Like, you know, sometimes like we eat for, we eat together for like Thanksgiving, um, for Christmas or Easter, we, you know, we get together with our families and have family dinner. But in some of these different cultures, they're eating together every day. So how about that? You know, everybody's helping to cook, everybody's eating together every day. And um, and that helps to build, you know, closer relationship. You get to check in more with everybody. That was something I noticed about um, Asian cultures. Make sure you get out those air bubbles, you guys, as much as possible with our giant ravioli. Oh, ooh, I see your hands, Kayla. Yes, that's like the flower on there. Uh huh. Yes.
All right, so Kayla, how old are you now? I'm 10. That is a great age. That means you're graduating. That means you're getting ready to go to middle school. That's good. Dito, aren't you going to middle school too? Aren't you graduating? Yes, on Me June too. 10th. Oh, you too, Kennedy? And I'm going to middle school. All right. Kennedy, what grade are you in? I'm in eighth. Oh, nice. So where are you going to high school? Wait, wait. I'm going to a school called Da Vinci Science. I've heard of that school before. Yes. Nice. Okay, so we got all kinds of graduates in here. Nice. Let me see. Let me see, Andrew. How about you? Let me see. Oh, no, Andrew. Andrew, are you in third or fourth grade? Kennedy, love. I don't think Miss Brenda heard. But yeah, but I think Andrew's in one of those grades. All right. Oh, so you guys, we're going to have next, um, next Thursday's graduation celebration. We're going to have all kinds of, we're going to have goodie bags for you guys. We're going to have a wonderful celebration on Zoom. I'm gonna celebrate all of you graduating. And what um, you know who else graduated too? Mr. Ajit, he graduated as well. Let me see, Mr. Ajit. I think you graduated with your master's, right? Uh yes. All right. So come on, you guys, Ms. Mr. Ajit. He graduates too. And so you guys can do like him and graduate. He's graduating from USC with his master's. And what's your master's in, Mr. Um, Ajit? It's in public health with a focus in biostatistics and epidemiology. Come on. That's what I'm talking about, Mr. Ajit. That's awesome. GG. <laughs> and you guys, epidemiology is, um, um, oh my goodness. It's uh, when you find a cure for cancer, right? Yes, yeah, so it's uh, the basically di distribution and determinants of disease. Mm. Okay, so different diseases. So, so how we prevent so diseases, and then like uh, we look at different calculations, like rates, and then preventing deaths and stuff like that. And it's related to statistics. That's awesome. So, in simple terms, Mr. G is going to help to find ways to prevent diseases. That's a great career. And that's a great, um, you know, especially right now with the pandemic and everything like that. It's like, how do we prevent? Because remember, you guys, right now we have the, right now it's the coronavirus. Don't forget in the past, there was measles, there was bronchitis, there was a uh, tuberculosis, there, there was polio. Yeah. There are all these other Zika virus and then Ebola, like seven, eight yeah. years ago, Ebola, Zika virus five years ago. Right. So, so. And then so we had the flu pandemic, like we had the swine yeah, flu, H1N1. Yeah, so, Elon Musk, you correct the Tesla law? And now. What did you say? No, no, it, 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 when I was talking about flus, I, 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 I thought about like this meme. Yeah. And, and, and I thought of Elon Musk, and I thought of how he's going to take everyone, like a lot of people to Mars for reduced <laughs> population on Earth. Um, so the population of Earth is going to go to Mars? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> it, it, but, 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 but also, um, um, and I was actually going to type to Elon Musk on like, I, I think it was on like Gmail or something. Like, wait a minute. We don't need to go to Mars. People are dying every day now <laughs> as a joke, but 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 but, but then I see now that would be kind of bad. Well, you need a man. <laughs> so you guys, all in all, we have to take care of ourselves. And it's important for you to build your immune system. A lot of times I think we've um 
you know, we're hearing a lot about, um, you know, six feet and all that kind of stuff, which is good, but really, really, really let's, let's, um, make sure that you're building your immune system. That means you're eating healthy. When you're eating healthy, you're building your immune system. When you're, um, drinking lemonade and I'm talking about fresh lemonade, like from, if you pick lemons from your tree. So if you have a lemon tree or maybe you have a friend or a neighbor that has a lemon tree, get some of their lemons, make some fresh lemonade. That citrus is going to be good for your immune system. So when we put ginger in our food and garlic, all that, those are things that help to build strong, strong teeth, bones, but also for your, um, all those white blood cells, they're helping to fight. Anytime you, there's something that flies by in the air or anything like that, it's going to help to keep your immune system strong. So you guys focus in on that. I don't want you guys to feel, I think with this pandemic, a lot of us, you know, and, and it's understandable, um, but really let's take care of ourselves because we don't know what's next, right? Who's to say that there's not something else, another challenge that we're going to face coming up. Let's take care of ourselves and keep our immune system strong and eat healthy, exercise, um, make sure we're not stressing. Um, you know, all those things help to give you a long life. Miss Cristal. Um, I go to the stairs, uh, uh, the, um, the, what is it called again? Culver City. The Culver City stairs every Saturday. Ooh, that's good. Oh, those stairs are no joke. <laughs> those stairs kick, look, I'm, look, you're probably a pro, but I know those stairs kick my butt every time, every single time. But that's good. So that keeps, keeps your, your, um your heart rate up, you guys. So that's awesome that you do the stairs every Saturday. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's going to keep you healthy. You're breathing. When you breathe in and you take a deep breath, you're getting all that good air. It's building your stamina. I had a friend of mine, she would do the stairs and she would do, um, what? She would do, tw she would go up and down it 20 times. <laughs> I was like, woo. I couldn't do 20 times, but she had been doing that for a long time. So um, I go, I go up and down three times. Whoa. Look, I tip my hat off to you because I went up and down three times, but I hadn't done it in a long time. And when I was done, I was super sore. I was like, <gasps> I couldn't walk the next day. <laughs> so, so yeah, but that's awesome. Good job, Kayla. All right, you guys, let's check on our dumplings. Um, that first batch that you must have put on, it should be, that should be done by now. I'm smelling it, it smells good. And then let's um, put together our, um, let's put together our dipping sauce and then we can eat. And- um, uh, Would it be okay if I like, uh, pit, not been like uh, all to, uh, would it be okay to add spotlight to other members? Absolutely. Because you said so like, take, take them off for a moment. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. Because I think one student D2 said that you wanted uh, to zoom in, so that's why. Yeah, because I know his his will soon. So as we start um, uh, taking it off of our, um, you know, taking the dumplings out, we'll see everybody's dumplings. Yes. Miss Christelle, can you fry them as they are? We don't have to steam them first and fry them. Yeah, yeah, you steam, you're steaming them first and then you're going to fry it. Okay. Oh, look, I forgot, Luke. No. I'm here, I'm here comfortable making the dumpling. I totally forgot about the frying it. Yes, we're going to fry them too. And the fry is just to get them crispy. So um, you're going to, you're going to fry some of your dumplings. So you'll have some steamed and you'll have some that are fried. So for the fried ones, um, I mean, for the, Take out your steamed ones and then let them cool just for a little bit and then put them in your oil and they're gonna get crispy. All right, so let me check on, let me check on some of mine. This is what they look like, you guys. 
So it should look something like that. Really shiny, glossy. They smell really good too. Mm. All right, so let these cool for a little bit and then we're gonna fry them. And um, so like what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these out and I'm gonna put some more back in here and then we're gonna fry this batch up and then the other ones will get to steam. Give it a taste. The ones that's been steaming, give it a taste and make sure it's um, make sure it's good. Make sure it has what it needs. Um, if it needs anything else, then you can add it to your add more to your um. Your we tested. Um, what did you say, Miss Brenda? We tasted. Um, you steam it and it's, it it tastes good. Tastes good. Awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna taste mine. Ooh, look at that one. It's hot. Ooh. Put it right there. Okay. Let me take these out and then I'm gonna put in some more. Ooh, ooh, those are good. Yes. Make you wanna do a dance when it's good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just the edge, These are the ones I took out from the steamer. There's this one here that I was gonna try. That's what it looks like on the inside. Mm -hmm. Woo! Okay.
while that's going, let's make our sauce. And then that's it, you guys. So soy sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce. Grab So for our dipping sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce. One, two, one tablespoon of water. One tablespoon of water. And then we have one teaspoon of rice vinegar. So I have this one here, one teaspoon of this. I was turning over my um, my dumplings. So a teaspoon of this. And, um, you could put two, two drops of the sesame oil, some cayenne pepper if you want it to be spicy, and the green onions. We're just going to chop those up and put those here in the dipping sauce. Oil and the
sprinkles there. And our green onion, just chop a couple chunks. And give it a taste, make sure it has what it needs. Like tangy. Mm, okay. I like that. That's a little different. All right. I don't know about you guys. So here's some of my dumplings that are frying their crispy edges. I think this one came out the best. So when I was frying it, I noticed that the dough was sticking to the bottom. So you play with the heat, play with your heat, and then not too much oil, just a little bit just to really glaze the bottom. So like you're going to get a good sear like how this one is right here. Um, so your filling doesn't fall out. And um, I had some other ones where the filling did. <laughs> so as you do this, you're gonna get better. All right. Okay, I'm gonna give mine a taste and dip it in the sauce. Let's see how that tastes like. Wow. Woo, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. All right, how you guys looking? How y'all coming? Good, okay, great. Oh yeah, the ginger that's in the, the filling. Mm-hmm, that's really good. All right, so D2, where are you guys at? Are you guys still um, frying them or did you make your sauce? Well, well, um, um, right now we're making our sauce, uh -huh. and we're also doing shrimp fried rice. So yeah, I'm doing the shrimp. What? Say it again. You said what about? You said something about shrimp. Yeah, we're doing shrimp fried rice. Ooh, look at you guys, fancy! Come on. Ooh, have you guys ever tried pineapple fried rice? Oh yeah, that one's good. Mm hmm. You guys, these dumplings are off the chain. The dipping sauce is great. Wow. Okay. Kayla, how are you guys coming? Miss Brenda, how are you guys coming over there? We're about to make our sauce. Okay, cool. Ooh. You know, I feel this, like the fried ones. I see why the fried ones are. On one of the videos I watched, the lady said the fried ones were her favorite. I see why. Does you get the little crispy edge? Mm-hmm. Ooh, Kayla. Those are beautiful. Wow. Mr. G, did you spotlight her? Oh, Miss Miss Kayla? Yeah, I'm going to, yeah. Okay, let's see it again. Mm-hmm. Those are beautiful. Oh, and oh, those are the steamed ones. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is so good. All right. And then you can try it. Dip it into your sauce. Tell me what you think. All right, I'm gonna put some more to fry. But Miss Brenda, how are you coming? Andrew, how are you guys coming over there? We are still cooking. Okay, okay. okay. We're we're doing, 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 yeah. Doing, doing, doing. We made all the package. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So I am still cooking. Mm. But did you fry? Did you fry some? So fry some. And then um, I want y'all to try it. <laughs> These are so amazing. I feel, I feel like um, like how it was when we were making the tempura udon. When we did the um, when we did the tempura. I think I ate like a million tempura vegetables <laughs> that day. <laughs> this is good. So you got your crispy edge, your sauce. Sauce. The sauce is fire. Like with everything, it's really good. All right, you guys, tell me what it tastes like with the sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah, what do you guys think? Tell me. How do you guys like them? Is it quiet because you guys are trying? Okay, I see Miss. Okay, I see Miss. Miss um, Tracy's bringing some over to the tape. Ooh. May I like remove the spotlight now, or wait a second? Um, I know Miss Tracy. She's almost ready. Who's Miss Tracy? Um, D2's mom. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll spotlight them right now. Oh, yeah, Kennedy's gonna, can you go show us? Okay. I'm gonna put some more to fry. Okay, I think this time it's almost ready. Mm -hmm. Feel free to show us yours too. So, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have. Okay, hold on. Wow. 
Looks, looks good. What's up with the child? Bring, bring it back a bit. Bring it back a bit. There we go. Yeah. That looks so good. Wow. I love the I love your decor. Very nice. Awesome. Look, you. Thank you. We went to an Asian Wait, store. Taste huh? We went to an Asian store to get the decor. Ooh, nice. That looks good, Miss Tracy. You know, I went to like five stores to find the pot sticker wraps. Really? Yeah, and I and this guy, I went to Aldi Market, and he said you, you have to go to the Asian store next door. So we went there, and they had it there. Okay, so they had it next door. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Kennedy, what does it taste like when you dip it in the sauce? Was there how's it taste? It's good. <laughs> it's good, but spicy. Okay, so you guys made yours a little spicier. Mm. I know, look, Miss Trace is trying to run out your mouth. <laughs> Kennedy, made, Kennedy made it spicy. <laughs> See, I like spicy. Kennedy, do you like spicy? Do you too come tight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are really good. I can see eating, I think most people when they go to eat dumplings, they'll like eat like a bunch because they're so good. And so what they say, you can eat this as an appetizer. You can have it as a, as a full meal. So it's just totally up to you. How you want it. Okay, D2, let's tell me, tell us what you think. What you think, D2? Oh my God. And take a picture of the place. <laughs> <laughs> How does it taste? Let's see D2, um, Ajit. What you got? What you got? What you got? What you got? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumb all around. Thumbs up! Thumbs up. Come on. Thumbs up. <laughs> I'll just teach about 75. Okay, now I'm going to take a picture. You said a 75%? What? I like I love them. I'm gonna do too. I may have to beg the difference. I think this is like a like a hundred percent. And and I can see you playing with like the fillings and stuff. <laughs> All right, you guys. Look, we are well over time. So we will be going to the Philippines next week. We're gonna be making an adobo. Um, chicken adobo in the field from the Philippines next week and our um, uh, what is it again our funnel cake that's the big one yeah both those uh -huh. those are the ones on these y'all trying to get it <laughs> get it while it's hot get it while it's hot <laughs> awesome why is it so smooth they've eaten them all we we got look i see they're like they're like get in there <laughs> oh miss hey, thank thank you, you, christian i'm gonna do some homemade chinese rice oh Ooh, nice this thank good. you so much oh you're welcome Ajit. you, oh, yeah, you know it's supposed to be really sitting good. down right Who's, oh, oh, everybody, because they're eating standing up. <laughs> no, I'm supposed to be resting. Oh, right. 